Hi, I'm Rich Bonaducci with the Standard Examiner and Salt Lake Magazine. Welcome to Critical Mass. Hi, my name is Caitlin Booth. I am the film critic and comic critic over at Watch Play Read. Now, normally we're shooting this in Ogden at Art House Cinema 502, but because we just got done seeing a movie, and we saw one last night as well, it's been busy, uh, we thought we'd come right over here to K-Powder and just shoot in their offices. But still, make sure that you get on Facebook and like Art House Cinema 502, KPDR, Watch, play, read. They have a Facebook, right? Yes, we do. And Critical Mass as well, and Standard Examiner and Salt Lake Magazine. Now, we're going to talk about two movies tonight. The second will be, <laughs> we're already laughing about oh, it, yeah. Fifty Shades of Grey. We'll yeah. do that next. But first, let's start off with Kingsman, The Secret Service. Let's just show you a clip. Actually, I'll show them a trailer, give them a taste of the whole movie. This is the trailer for Kingsman, The Secret Service. <laughs> We are an independent international intelligence agency operating at the highest level of discretion. That was the headline the day after I defused a dirty bomb in Paris. Front page news on all these occasions was nonsense. It's the nature of Kingsman that our achievements remain secret. How deep does this thing go? Deep enough. Being a Kingsman has nothing to do with the circumstances of one's birth. If you're prepared to adapt and learn, you can transform. That is sick. Oh, yes. Very, very nice. I'm offering you the opportunity to become a Kingsman. Interested? You think I've got anything to lose? Oh, there's a lot to lose. I guarantee it. Valentine's a threat which affects us all. Mankind is a virus. Mass genocide? I like it. You are completely crazy. Do I look like I get it? Assemble the Kingsman. Yeah! What is this to electrocute you? Don't be ridiculous. It's a hand grenade. Shut up. It's a bit much, isn't it? Begin countdown. Five, four, three, two, one. Party! Give us break. Sorry about that. Needed to let off a little steam. Uh-uh. This is mine. What if I save the world? Will you give me a kiss? I'll give you more than just a kiss. I'll be right back. Son of a... So that was the trailer from uh, Kingsman, The Secret Service. And what I find amusing, maybe you'll agree with me or not, is that... The Kingsman promised to be this, this, from the trailer, this, you know, fun adventure. And Fifty Shades of Grey promised to be this hot, erotic thing. <laughs> and meanwhile, I kind of, I'm jumping the gun a little bit here, but, but I kind of thought Fifty Shades was a little stale. And Kingsman was totally gratuitous in, yeah. like, every way. Yeah. What did you think? Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I'm also a fan of Mark Millar. I absolutely thought Kick-Ass was a fantastic movie. The second one was not mm -hmm. as good, mm -hmm. but right. you know. The first one, I'm a, I'm a huge fan of that, so I was kind of expecting that kind of humor from him. Okay. Um, the you mean juvenile? Yeah, juvenile. <laughs> I was expecting juvenile. I was expecting over the top. Um, I don't really, I, I was expecting gory, too. Um, not that gory. Yeah. I mean, here and there, when they were showing people getting injured, but, but they did it so quickly, it was almost like, oh, did I see, did I see that finger come off? <laughs> I think I did, but they didn't like, you know, dwell on it. No, it wasn't nearly as bad as some of uh, Hit Girl's fight sequences in the first exactly. class, especially the one in the, the hotel near the end. That one was, yes. that was a flat out brutal sequence. This one <sighs> tend to go more for, uh, for comedy in the sense, in, within the brutality. It's like, this is absolutely horrifying to look at, but at the same time, 
it's also hilarious because it was it was a co dark comedy. There's darkness there. Yeah, the the violence was so over the top and hyper. It was it was it was almost well, it was it was stylistic and and very much like a comic book. Yep, and yeah. that would be because it is based on a comic book. Exactly. Now, had you read them? I have not. I have it sitting on my giant pile of stuff at home. So, I thought about trying to blow through it really fast, either yesterday morning or sometime right before I saw the movie. And then I was like, well. You know, I kind of want to go in without any prejudice towards the comic, because right. doing the whole, you know, book versus comic thing. So I'm judging it solely based on the fact that it's a movie. Mm -hmm. Plus, you had to get through Fifty Shades of Grey, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I've been mentally preparing myself for that <laughs> one for a while. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay, so this movie is one big, I don't know if the comics are necessarily, but Kingsman is one big send up of basically spy fi, I call it. Um, it Bond flicks. I mean, it has everything that a Bond flick has just to the nth degree. Mm -hmm. You have the crazy gimmicks that they very plainly explain <laughs> so that later on you know how they work. Yep. Um, you've got the evil villain who is immeasurably rich and has <laughs> his own plan for world dominance and his own signature way of dressing yep. and way of speaking oh, yes. and goofy name oh, yes. and a sidekick who is his bodyguard who also has her own gimmick, mm -hmm. like uh, James Bond's Jaws had had a gimmick. She has she has prosthetic legs, the kind that you've probably seen Olympic uh, folks run yep. on the carbon fiber stuff. So these are made of some kind of metal that are razor sharp, mm -hmm. and she knows how to use them, <laughs> as we find out in like the first ten minutes. Yes, yes. And uh, of course, the, the 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 good guys are there too. The the Kingsmen are these perennial gentlemen mm -hmm. who are well spoken, well read, well educated. Uh, well dressed, obviously, <laughs> and always chivalrous. Yep. Right up until the moment they can kill you with anything. Yep. And um, overwhelmingly British. Overwhelmingly <laughs> British. Every old British guy you know is in this movie. <laughs> and of course, a problem that we chatted about: the Bond ladies are in there too, or at yes. least one of them. This sort of of, of uh, powerful woman in her own right, who is ready to give up all self-respect. Because <gasps> super spy, yeah, that I kind see. of thing. But all taken to the nth degree, all played for laughs. Oh yeah, even the violence. Oh yeah. But are there any buts for you? I really, really enjoyed it. Like you huh. said, like uh, there was um, <coughs> there were a couple moments where I was like, oh, this is a little too much. Especially at the moment we talked about earlier towards the end, which I don't think we want to spoil. Yeah, don't want to spoil. No. I won't spoil it too much. There um, there is a joke. And it's funny, and then let's just say they take it just a bit too far. They go right over that line. Yeah, which I think was a little unnecessary. Um, Me too. But I, I laughed. I, I thought it was really well paced. I liked the way that uh, Matthew Vaughn shot all of the action. I thought everything was very steady. One of my biggest pet peeves in action scenes is the shaky camera that a lot of directors tend to rely on. I am a huge fan of the tripod. I like to be able to see. Yes. This one. I'm a huge fan of the tripod. I like to be able to see where things are in an action scene. If the sh camera is moving around too much for me, I tend to uh, get lost. I, get, I can't remember where everything is in retrospect to everything else. In this one, you can very much tell, okay, this person is here, this person is here, and you can tell where they are in the space. Yeah, uh, I, I too don't like when they do that m almost MTV style machine gun editing, mm -hmm. and you can't really tell I mean, you know someone's fighting, but you don't really know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I just kind of, I zone out for a moment and wait and see who won. Because yeah. I don't know how they win. Yeah, and that's what makes them <coughs> forgettable. It's why you can not remember a single thing that happened in a Transformers movie five minutes after it happens. Because when you have no sense of space or any sense of where people are, you won't remember anything. And this is shot, like she was saying, that it's very stylistically done, but the action sequences are probably like a combination a little bit of Matrix bullet time, mm -hmm. a sort of uh, almost GoPro point of views now and again from the weapons point of view or whatnot, and first person shooter perspective. Mm -hmm. All blended together, mm -hmm. and the, uh, the fighting sequences are well choreographed, and again, the camera moves all around them yep. so you can see what they're doing, and they're doing a lot. Yes. And uh, there are two sequences specifically that, that, that you mentioned, that th there's a big fight sequence at a church, and then a final, a uh, violent sequence at the end. And although I know they were going for gratuitous and over the top, even then I thought, 
Wow, these are going on really yeah, long. Yeah, the, uh, the church one is kind of the infamous one. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of stuff about that online. People have been talking about that one. And uh, it, it probably did go on a little too long. Maybe though. two minutes too long. <laughs> yeah. I, I was asking, how, how long was that? Yeah. No one really timed um, it. But I think I read somewhere six? that it's like, yeah. Like six-ish? Yeah, six minutes, I think. Yeah, I think gratuitous would have been reached at four. Yeah. yeah. And it was already pretty gratuitous because of the, the scene and, you know. Yep what was being done to other human beings. Although it couldn't happen to nicer people. Yeah. Um, I think that's one of the things that <laughs> That I was think a very low-handed <laughs> swipe that, <laughs> I that I thought was just brilliant. <laughs> I think that they were, they were, I think they knew that the violence was, was bad mm -hmm. and that a lot of what is being shown is, is awful. So they decided to do it to people that you could almost, in a way, get behind it happening to. It's like we don't have Nazis anymore. No. Nope. Everybody hates Nazis. Yes. You can, it, you know, you use them in, in Indiana Jones 1 and 2, so you can feel good about him machine gunning people. Mm -hmm. But we don't have them anymore, so we go with hate groups. So, yes. And uh, we're all right with that to a certain hate extent. Hate groups are terrorists. Uh, yeah, exactly. We don't have, that's one of the problems these days, is there is no clear-cut bad guy anymore like there was in World War II. But... Uh, yeah, they, they went with hate groups, and hate groups is a pretty good way to go. Yeah, as, as a test. Mm -hmm. um, now, I, do you, have, have you heard anything negative? I mean, flat out negative. I mean, other than, oh, this scene went on too long or whatever. Uh, I've been trying to avoid other reviews because the movie's been out for a while in England. Mm -hmm. I've been hearing positive <clears> things <throat> from people, but I've mostly been trying to stay away from other reviews just because I didn't want to go in with you know, I was already going in with pretty high expectations because I absolutely love Matthew Vaughn. Okay. He's one of my favorite directors. And I was I had high expectations because I thought he would do a really good job. And I enjoyed Kick-Ass, too. And X-Men First Class. Uh, X-Men First Class, that's like my favorite X-Men movie. I was going to say, <laughs> it easily beats the first three. Oh, yes. I think. Although oh. I did like the second one. Okay, yes. But, yes. But, um, How about some of your friends, maybe, that, that were at the... The reason I'm asking, asking is because I, I, I invited some folks with me mm -hmm. that I thought would like it. Mm -hmm. They, they didn't just not like it. They hated. it. Really? See, I invited. I had somebody come with me, and as soon as he found out that this movie was coming out, he said to me, "You are taking me, taking me to this movie because he used to be my movie buddy before I got hired by Watch Play Read." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can't always bring folks. No, you can't always uh, bring people. So he insisted on coming to that one, and we talked about it pretty much the entire way back. And he he really liked it too. He, so, so let me ask you this, because I, I thought my friends were reading into it just a little bit too much. Mm -hmm. I, I, I actually thought that this took a swipe at almost everyone. Mm -hmm. Like, if you go in there, no offense, guys, if you go in there with no sense of humor about yourself, mm -hmm. you're probably going to get offended by what's on the screen, because they, they, they take a swipe at Republican politics, mm -hmm. Democratic politics, climate believers, mm -hmm. climate deniers, <laughs> rich people, poor people, educated, uneducated, men, women. I mean, like, no one really gets away without a shot. Um, but there was one thing that I wish they had done better with mm -hmm. our, our heroine, Roxy. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, she, apparently, uh, first of all, she's kick-ass, forgive mm -hmm. the pun, and she becomes a true kingsman. I mean, she's, she's very, uh, very much a powerful person in her own right. But she's saddled with, I think, a fear of heights, I guess. Yeah, it's not very clear. Yeah, heights or, or falling, I don't know. But it's something that uh, our hero, Eggsy, constantly has to like reassure her about. Mm -hmm. And I almost wanted to be like, I wish it was the other way in a way. Yeah. That he had something that she was there for him and he grew because of her support rather than the other way. Although I'm sure someone would have found a problem with that too. But um, I did think it was strange that the I, it, it, for me, that part was weird with her doing the big stunt at the end that I won't reveal, mm -hmm. which was basically her toughest thing to do. Yeah. I'm like, why don't you have him do that <laughs> and have her go do this? I'm like, oh, that's because it's his story, not hers, and this is secondary, but that wasn't a good enough reason. But I don't know, wh what did you think of that as now you are the representative of the entire female? Oh, yes, I, am, I represent all women now. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> Without spoiling, I am glad that they didn't <coughs> put her into a certain trope that I was expecting as soon as they introduced her. Not the girlfriend. Her. Exactly. She right. was not the girlfriend at all. Right. And as soon as they introduced her, I was like, oh, it's the girlfriend. It's going to be the girlfriend. I was expecting her to be the girlfriend, to be honest. Yeah. And the fact that, that she wasn't, I did appreciate quite a bit, actually. I thought that was 
a nice change of pace. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, it didn't. It left the door open for that joke that neither of us were really that fond of. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But uh, I like the fact that she wasn't a love interest. She was her own person. I thought she was underutilized. I think they could have used her a lot more. There was a huge section at the end where we didn't even see her. Probably That's true. for a good 10 minutes yeah. at least. And then it cut back and we're like, oh, there she is. I, I kept kind of expecting her to, to show kick up. a door down <laughs> and show up and start kicking some butt. And she didn't. I was kind of disappointed about that. I wanted to see more of her. I would have liked to have seen more, a lot more of her, actually. And there's a lot of cool uh, editing back and forth between in, in, in certain climactic sections. You're, you're following, I was trying to count, four to six different lines of action that mm -hmm. they're going back and forth with. And yeah. she was one of them. Yes. But after her part kind of got taken care of, you didn't see her for a while. Yeah. And I was hoping that she was going to somehow. I, I really did think she was going to kick the door down. Yeah. So there's that. But uh, it is... I wouldn't say the language is necessarily harsh, although there is some in it, but mm -hmm. it is, it's the violence and a little, little bit of sexuality there mm -hmm. as far as uh, what, you're, what you're in for when you show up. So if you were to give it like a grade rating, what would you give it? Because I'm right at a B. It's not an A or even an A minus for me. It's, it's, for me, it's a B range because I think it's good. It's fun. Mm -hmm. It's very entertaining. But it did have a couple weaknesses that I, I felt like just dragged it down just a little bit that maybe they'll correct in subsequent sequels because they totally left the door oh, open Oh, they, they did, that. and I've seen a couple reports saying that they're talking about it. Um, okay. If I had to give it a, C, a, a grade, I would probably go with like an A-. There you I, go. I really liked it a lot, and I'm actually thinking about going and paying to see it again this weekend. <laughs> if you do, time that church fight. I should. I absolutely I should. I really want you to just... <laughs> Just time that turn. Pull out a stopwatch. We need to know. <laughs> okay, so Caitlin gives it an A minus. I give it a B. We still think you should check it out either way, obviously. And on the big screen, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, check out the full review from Caitlin on Watch, Play, Read, and from me on, uh, I think I'm going to put that one on Standard Examiner, but check out <laughs> Salt Lake Mag 2. And stick around because we're going to come back and talk about 50 Shades of Grey.